All right, talking tunes, and we're talking with the one and only Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. It's nice to talk to you anyway, even though we can't uh, be together anymore for a while. You know, nice to yeah. have you on the phone anyway. Now, a little, a little strange doing it this way, but I guess it'll be all right. Yeah, well, you know, you, I know how much you miss giving me a, a big hug and, and kiss, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I didn't, I don't miss. <laughs> Now, what, what about, uh, we want to talk a little bit about some of the things that have been going on, you know, because it's been so much going on during this whole thing when we've been kind of trapped inside our houses. But, um, one thing that happened fairly recent was, uh, Kenny Rogers passing away and you and I both, you know, love Kenny Rogers music. So, and you know, and Kenny Rogers, and we got that old story where we actually pretended we were big time reporters and got backstage yeah. for a Kenny Rogers concert. Got you know. free, yeah. I got free tickets to get into the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we, it was very, it was very cool. I mean, we got to see how they built the round stage that he was on that circular ch- stage that he had. And, and yeah, uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was Kenny, Rod- I think I seen him three times. I saw him once with Terry. I saw him <laughs> once with you sneaking backstage and, uh, once with, uh, Terry and my daughter, we actually went and saw Kenny Rogers. So it was, you know, I'm just a big fan of the guys. So, uh, very, very sad, but I mean, he was 81 years old and I, I'm not sure what his problem was exactly. They really never said that I heard, but, uh, I, I think they said natural death. Yeah. But I just, I just was uh, listening to an interview. I just put an interview on that, uh, was talking about, um, Kenny Rogers two years ago when he decided to retire, to step down. I mean, that it was only two years ago that he, he, he stopped singing, you know, it's amazing. So, I mean, he did, yeah, but his voice, his voice was going though. Yeah, it was, it was going. I mean, I, I remember that, uh, special he had when they did, uh, they gave him the, the country music thing, I think it was. And, and he sang a couple of songs and, and, uh, I remember he sang one with Lionel Richie and lady, of course, the song that Lionel Richie, um, wrote with him. And so, you know, it just, it, anyway, it's a, it's a sad thing to, to think that, I guess you, you feel old <laughs> when somebody like that passes away, when you're used to, you know, when you grew up with them, so to speak. So one of yeah, the many. Yeah. Well, like you said, uh, the time that uh, you and I were down there, that's the first time I was able to see Kenny Rogers in person. Of course, that was uh, when he came about, it was way past my DJ days. So that yeah. was, uh, that was a nice going back like that and be able to, you know, it brought back a lot of memories from my fifties experiences, but right. that was very, that was very fascinating. And the only other fascinating thing was the time we went to walk or read and I think kiss was in there and I was, I was walking to the bathroom up on one of the, you know, the, the upper thing there where you walk to the bathroom when they shot off those fireworks, I was just opposite in the stage. I almost didn't have to go to the bathroom. It was almost <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost let it let it all hang out right there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So, My favorite. I saw where you. Uh, I saw where you put up uh, going back to uh, Kenny Rogers in the first edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Some one of that of, music. That was one of my favorite songs by him. They tell it all, brother. And you know, it was a, yeah. My my yeah. Si- my sister Kathy, who had passed away a few years ago. Um, I used to babysit her, her girls, her kids when I was younger, and she didn't have much music variety there and you know me i like to hear my music they she had the yeah. car she had the carpenter she had like don ho and uh she had some a track that was there it was like a boot one of those bootleg a tracks and one of the songs on on track i remember was always on track four was kenny rogers singing tell it all brother so i'd always have to listen to that whole track to flip it back to track four to hear that song again i play it like three or four times you know it just it was one of my <laughs> One of my favorites by him. So I was just, yeah. I don't know, 13 yeah, or so. My, yeah, my two favorite songs by him, of course, uh, number one was The Gambler. Oh, yeah. And uh, number two, because I just liked the flow of it, was uh, Islands in the Stream with Dolly Parton. Oh, yeah. That was a that was one of his biggest hits with Dolly was The Islands yeah. in the Stream. Pretty, pretty interesting yeah. story about that one, too. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, he had a lot of good music, a lot of good music, though. That that's for sure. And that song was written by Barry Gibb too of the Bee Gees. So there you go, Islands in yeah. the Stream. Um, yeah, the other one, you know, of course. You, you know what you see? You can see when all these these big artists get together, 
when you start looking at biographies and information and stuff like that, you find out of those things, like, like what you just mentioned, that, yeah, it was a big song, but it was written by Lionel Richie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or somebody down here that had a big hit on his own, wrote this song for somebody else. You seem to find a lot of that out that maybe you didn't know. You know, the funny thing was, too, he talked about, you know, like just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Condition was in, yeah. yeah. That and was he, another good one. He <laughs> talked about how, you know, that's why he stopped writing songs because he did something like that. But he really didn't even really write that song. He worked with a writer on that song. So it was kind of like yeah. a collaboration kind of thing. But, you know, it's just it's just funny how some of this stuff and, the, you know, the one thing Kenny Rogers, the first edition, I was a big, big fan of them. So, of course, you know, we tell it our brother and, and uh, Ru Ruben James and, and all that stuff that he did early. And then you, yeah. didn't, you didn't hear about him. And then all of a sudden you're sitting in a bar and all of a sudden you hear picked upon time to leave me. It's like, that's Kenny Rogers. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty good. So good stuff. It's surprising that the way he started out and not knowing that with Kenny Rogers in the first edition, which really wasn't country then. No, it was it was more middle of the road type of thing. A little acid rock mixed in there a couple of times with some of the sound effects, yeah. and where he ended up going in the country field, you just boggle your mind you said nah that he's not gonna end up doing that you know well he kind of started off on the folks the folk uh music though yeah with, with the association so i mean you know he did the full circle i think he did just about right. everything plus acted you know yeah I, I was never a big fan of his acting in the gambler but you know i'm sure there were a lot yeah, of people that yeah, were. you know yeah it was it was okay but yeah uh, give me a break, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like it was funny. Kenny Rogers as the stuff. cowboy or <laughs> Yeah, it was good stuff. It was good stuff. Anyway, the other thing that we were gonna do that we never got a chance to because of the whole wonderful virus that uh kept our is keeping us all home, is uh we never got to talk about uh Chuck Berry who celebrated a birthday back in March was it March eighteenth or uh, October, he, uh, yeah, March 18th, he died, and he was born on oh, October 18th. He died on March 18th, okay, which yep. is Terry my anniversary, but anyway. And uh, yep. and the one thing we always talked about when we were over there at the uh, at the radio station, <laughs> remember that? It was, seems so long ago now. But anyway, we were at the radio station, is the uh, the one song that he did, uh, My Dingling, which was a number one song for him. And it was a live version. It was done over in England. And on the flip side, the song he, he sang on the flip side was Johnny Be Good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I played that. I, I, because you brought it up, I got the single out, and, uh, and, I, and I didn't want to do it down here on the turntable, so I brought it up online. <laughs> and I played that backside Johnny Be Good two or three times. I couldn't believe I, know. I couldn't believe that. That guy's please. Please, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's pleading the crowd. No, we want Johnny. We want Johnny. We want Johnny. <laughs> and then, and then at the end of it, when he finally says, "And you know, Chuck's got to leave. He's got to go. We got to bring in the." He didn't say Pink Floyd. He said, "We got to yeah. bring in the Pink Floyd." So it's like, okay, yeah. that was back we in got, England. We got two thousand people. Who want to see Pink Floyd? God, <laughs> give us a break. So yeah, that just shows what kind of what kind of crowd that uh went wanted to see uh chuck berry now yeah and that was the, it was a short version of johnny be good too it wasn't a yeah, long version yeah i think he probably just wanted to get the heck out of there but yeah but um because he made the you know my dingling that was kind of made up off the cuff because it was another song it wasn't my dingling it was something else and yeah he, he called it something else to start with yeah and he just kind of redid it right there for the crowd and they ate it up but and it became a number one song for it so there you go um, yeah, you know, I mean, you just brought up that he made it up kind of when he was there. It's kind of the way he was. He'd walk into a, uh, to do a, do a show and he would just take the band that was there, the house band. Okay. You guys just follow me, you know, right. That was kind of the way he was. Well, that, that, I guess I, I was, I've shared this before too, as far as Bruce Springsteen, I was saying that, yeah, he was, that was one of his favorite times when he was part of uh, Chuck Berry's band because it was a, he came to, I don't know, wherever it was in New York and uh, Brooklyn or whatever, and he, he uh, was a guitar player, and he helped uh, be one of the guitar players for Chuck Berry. And he said Chuck yeah. Berry looked at him and said, you know, what are, we, what are we doing? He says, 
Just follow me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just follow me. It's Chuck Berry music. Just follow me. It's like, yeah. When you when you listen to Chuck, though, it, a lot of it, you know, is pretty much, you can pretty much figure it out. So, but yeah. um, the question I got for you, okay, uh -huh. I, I haven't looked at any books or on Google or anything. Who was the first man of rock and roll? Was it Chuck Berry or was it Little Richard? I mean, of course, most people would say Elvis Presley, but we know better. You know what? I I don't really know. I yeah, would I'll have say to look it up. Yeah, be up to the two of them. I think. I think uh, Fats is pretty close in there too. Yeah, I think Little Richard was in the gospel singing yeah. before Chuck Berry. So Chuck Berry might have hit the charts first, but Chuck Berry wasn't singing like Little Richard was in the churches. Right. In fact, Chuck Berry came out of the uh, youth offender's home for our robbery. He spent three years in the youth offender's home for robbery back in, oh, 50, I don't know, 50, I don't know what it was. Early 50s, then. Before, it was before he started. It was before he started. Yeah. So, and I think Little Richard was singing in gospel before that. So I would say, I, as far as rock and roll goes, I don't know which one hit it first. I would say Little Richard was in the music singing before Chuck was. Yeah, but as far as rock and roll goes, I think Chuck might have been the first. I yeah. don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I, I watched a documentary on, on both of them, and, and uh, I don't remember the date, so I can't say, but one right. of them were the, was the first one. Little Richard always yeah. claims to be the, the first man of rock and roll, but. Yeah, yeah you remember, uh, uh, hang on a second. You remember uh, up there, we were talking with uh, uh, the Headstone Project. What was his name, Bob? No, no. <laughs> Steve Salter. The key. Steve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I was just thinking of him when I was looking looking some of this stuff over about Chuck Berry because Muddy Waters, which he brought up, uh, talked about quite a bit, uh, led Chuck Berry to the, to the chess label. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's how Chuck Berry got involved in there. That was through Muddy Waters. Yeah, so, I mean, the blues, and then he, and he kind of changed it a little bit and gave it a little more rock and roll flavor maybe. But, I mean, Muddy, yeah. Wa Muddy Waters was pretty rocking, though, too, a lot of stuff yeah. he did. So yeah, it's, okay. What, the, what what it says here is before Chuck Berry got out of high school, he was sent to the Missouri prison for youth offenders. He spent uh, three—I don't think it was three years—for uh, armed robbery. He got out in good behavior, and that is when he met his wife, uh, Fametta Toddy Suggs. Okay. Are you sure? And she, she's the one that straightened him out and got him going. And then, of course, he went in, sent Muddy Waters, went to chess, and came out with Maybelline. Okay, what year was that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. This all happened between 52 and 1960. Oh, okay, the, well, 52, that's that's definitely before they said rock and roll started. So, Yeah. But yeah. So then he went. Then he went to prison in 1960 or 61 for for two years. Uh, for uh, the Man Act, uh, they said that he <laughs> he had a secretary or he had a, a somebody that would help him out. It was a young girl, and the story went, and we never know. The story went that he offered to take her across state lines to go where they were going to the next concert. And that's against the Mann Act. Oh, okay. They nailed him for that for three years or two years. Wow. Back in 61. And he said Barry's defense was, was not found credible by the all male, all white jury. Yeah. Uh, and he was convicted in 1960, sentenced to five years imprisonment and $5,000 fine. Although he would have his conviction vacated in a new trial ordered by federal appeals court in October 60 due to this arranging racial comments made by the judge in his original trial, Barry would be convicted again on retrial 
on March 1961 and served the better part of the next two years in prison. Oh, my. Yeah, so the poor guy got nailed twice. <laughs> Can you imagine how many more songs he would have done if, you know, for, I don't know. Anyway, you always wonder know, about that, yeah. too, like Sam Cooke and, and uh, all these people that die so young and yeah. uh, Otis Redding and, oh, man. But anyway. Of course, you know, what, what you, I, I'm probably the same with you. When I grew up and liked all these artists and saw them and they're up in the air and, hey, we're going, you never knew any of this stuff. Yeah, you never knew any of this stuff went on unless it just happened a big time in the news. Oh, I yeah. never knew he was in prison uh, either one of the times. I heard he was in trouble in the sixties, yeah. but I was still in the navy then, so uh, I you're kind of out of touch a little bit. Yeah, just like Ray Charles, what he had to go through, and yeah, just yeah, just, just amazing. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you can go back to even uh, not well, what was it, nineteen seventies. When when uh, Marvin Gaye got shot by his father, I mean Marvin Gaye was just just came back, just you know yep. getting back together, getting everything, doing you know sexual healing and doing these great songs again, and you know that was it for him. So right. it's just amazing to think about all this stuff. But yeah, I guess it's something to do to keep our mind up what's going on. I guess let's yeah. Get, well, let's yeah, we're grown up now, so we can handle these things. We're not little teeny boppers. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you're still, you're always curious about the stories, you know. I, said, I, I think I watch just about every documentary I can get my hands on about rock and roll stars, you know. So. Yeah, yep. But. Um, he, had, he had four kids. Melody, Charles Jr., Ingrid, and Aloha. Okay. So that's not, that's not, they're all still alive. And, yeah. Uh, Samantha, I, I see if she died first or whether she. Now Chuck just what Chuck just died like a year ago, didn't he, or something like that? Uh, yeah, he died in 2017. March. Uh, oh, 17. Did. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a couple 20, years March ago. 18th in 2017. He was born October 18th, 1926. Okay, so he was actually younger than my father. But anyway, yeah, I I think I think she's still alive. Oh, the wife, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um. I just want to get to the whole uh, in-house thing. How you doing over there? I mean, the weather hasn't been as good. I know you like to be an outdoor guy, so the weather hasn't been uh, great for that. But uh, yeah, how you surviving? Yeah, everything seems to be blocking me. I got out and I said, "Well, you know what? I've got two great. Ba- I've got thirty leaf bags. I can start raking up leaves." So I start raking up leaves, and I said, "Now wait a minute. They said they were going to open." the gates down here April 1st so you can bring your leaves down. Well, then this thing hit. Okay, are they going to open it up now? I don't want to bag too many leaves because what am I going to do with them in the meantime? They get wet, saggy, they're going to break all over the place. Yeah, put them in the living room. (laughs) And they aren't going to play, and they're not going to start picking them up until May 1st. Ah, Now, wait a minute, maybe they won't be picking them up at the beginning of May. So that killed that idea, so my lawn's all still full of leaves. Well, there you go. So I okay. I want to fix my roof. I want to do a little work on the side over here. I can't go to Lowe's because it's not necess- essential travel to get a can of paint. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Well, it's better to stay safe, though. Stay home and stay yeah, safe. Well, that's the only thing. But it's getting a little boring. Our, oh, our hand club. We're doing. I'm sitting here now. It's my turn to monitor the two meters. I mean, that's way above the frequency that you and I are on in the radio station. We're up to 146.940 megahertz or something like that, up to two meters. And I'm monitoring the club uh, to take messages because now we have to do it that way. We can't go have a club meeting, but we still we have somebody assigned to go up there and check it, make sure it's all right. We do our board meetings and our front porch meetings on the radio here. So. There right. you go. That's where I was before. There you go. Yeah, because you said you were on the air. I'm thinking, what the yeah. heck is he talking about? Yeah, he, well, I think. He had another you know radio that. station I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, I've got two of them here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on two different frequencies. Uh-huh. They don't, you know, I can talk to the whole world, man. What can you do? You talk to the whole world? <laughs> I, I don't know. I like to teach the world. I, I would like to teach the world to sing. In perfect yeah, harmony, right. there you go. but I don't sing perfect harmony myself, so I guess I can't teach them. So I know, I know it. Yeah, I know, uh, I different. know you know it. <laughs> yeah. Two different worlds. Yeah, the radio station, the radio station, and 
the, the stuff I do, the ham radio and stuff I do here. Very interesting, all, all of them. Yeah. Uh, anything on the airways. Yep, yep. So I am. But we're, we're doing okay. Uh, I, I've checked with all the family. I've got 42 people in my family between here and back in New York. And that, that includes the cousins and stuff. And right. nobody's gotten sick yet. Everybody's okay. So. Yeah, it's a big thing in and New they're York. Back yeah. in, you know, 20 of them are back in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, uh, yeah, like I was telling my cousin today. Uh, we're lucky in a way because she lives in a little small town that's in the middle of New York. It's not near anything big. We're the same thing here in Muskegon, uh, you know, up against the lake. So we're in small little communities. So right. maybe this will all stop before it hits it. But I have noticed now that they yeah, are it's putting, in Muskegon. Detroit, they're putting Detroit right up there in the top yeah. now. Yeah, it's terrible over there, and I, I that's what makes me worry because I have a bunch of relatives over there. So yeah, because that's you came from there, didn't you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. and grew up there. Yep. I I went AWOL from the Navy once and ended up in Garden City. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I couldn't stay out of trouble, just like Chuck Berry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I can imagine. You took it took your wife to to settle you down. It and it took you, you took her that, a few <laughs> took her a few years too. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I would love to talk to you some more. So we'll, I'll, I'll call you later and uh, we'll catch up a little bit more. But I uh, just wanted to call and talk to you about Kenny and Chuck and uh, get your opinions on that and see how you were doing. So, yeah. Well, but, thank you very much. Uh, you, you and I got so much to talk about. We could oh, yeah. bore the whole world. Yeah. We could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said I'd like to teach the world to sing. I'd like to teach the world to get bored, I guess, because we could do that. Yeah. And the whole world turn around and say, we'd like to keep you guys shut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Peter okay. Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. I'll talk to you soon, and hopefully we can get back together here. Uh, I don't know. It's This has been probably the longest time you and I haven't uh, haven't seen each other. So it's like. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Stay safe. You too. See you later. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.